I'm delighted to welcome you to today to this important spotlight event. Um, today's event is one element of activity taking place as part of the International 16 Days of Action to Tackle Gender-Based Violence. As Joanna said, Co Cosla is co-owner of the Equally Safe Strategy with the Scottish Government um, and I co-chair that strategy board. The strategy, originally published in 2014 and updated in 2017, outlines our joint commitment to preventing and eradicating all forms of violence against women and girls in Scotland. It sets out an ambitious vision to create a strong and flourishing Scotland where all individuals are equally safe and respected and where women and girls live free from all forms of violence and abuse and the attitudes that help perpetuate it. Equally Safe defines violence against women and girls as violent and abusive behaviour directed at women and girls precisely because they are women and girls. It is behaviour which is overwhelmingly carried out by men. The strategy recognises that domestic abuse can have significant consequences for women, children and young people's lives, noting that there is significant evidence of links between domestic abuse and emotional, physical and sexual abuse of children and children themselves can see domestic abuse as coercive control of the whole family environment, not just of their mother. Police Scotland statistics show that there were 65,251 incidents of domestic abuse reported by the police in 2020-21, of which over 80% involved a female victim and a male perpetrator. But this is just the top of the iceberg for two reasons. Firstly, domestic abuse is not one incident of violence. Studies show that behind those incidents attended by the police will lie a pattern of controlling behaviour that over time limits the personal choices, the very autonomy of those targeted, while ever reinforcing the dominance, power and control of the perpetrator. We know that the use of physical violence is only one aspect of the controls that will be likely be applied along with the potential of emotional, financial, psychological and sexual abuse. The impact of these behaviours will be felt and experienced by the whole family, including children. Children can also be used and coerced by the perpetrator into participating in the abuse of others in their family. This is not reflected in the capture of reported incidents. Secondly, research also repeatedly shows that most domestic abuse continues to go completely unreported, with one in three women estimated to experience domestic abuse at some point in their lives, and one in five children in Scotland estimated to have experienced domestic abuse by the time they reach 18. We need to ask ourselves why. It is now understood that the most dangerous time for a victim or survivor of domestic abuse can be when she seeks to break out from the controls applied. Engaging with authorities and services can pose a serious threat to her safety and potentially the safety of her children via the repercussions from the perpetrator that may follow. And then there are also the risks of potential repercussions from the system itself. Both in Scotland and across the world, domestic abuse survivors, usually women, have traditionally been held responsible for the impact of that abuse on their child. Despite significant efforts in recent years to address this, research suggests that there's still a tendency for systems and services to focus on domestic abuse survivors' decision making rather than the perpetrator's pattern of coercive control as being the primary risk and safety concern for children. Often there are expectations that domestic abuse survivors will show that they are protective only if they carry out those often risk-filled actions that significantly impact the child and family functioning, such as seeking refuge, moving home, ending the relationship or calling the police. Systems and services, unless they are empowered to apply a gendered and domestic abuse coercive control and formed lens to how they operate, may fail to see the myriad other efforts that domestic abuse survivors undertake to keep their children safe and provide a stable, nurturing and tailing environment. Lack of focus on the perpetrator of domestic abuse can undermine our equally safe framed commitment to holding those who cause these harms to account. 
Equally safe takes a long term view to sustain and achieve progress, long term investment in early intervention and prevention alongside adequate and sustainable investment in gender trauma and domestic abuse informed systems and services across all local authority areas is critical to achieving success. Equally critical is our determination and persistence to continue working together towards a Scotland where all women, children and young people can live lives free from all forms of gender based violence. I look forward to hearing about the outcomes of your discussions today. I'm going to stay with you for about an hour, if that's OK. Um, but I won't look forward to hearing your discussions. It's an important time from these, for these to take place as a refreshment of the Equally Safe strategy will begin next year. Your expertise, advice and willingness to contribute to Scotland's commitment to preventing and tackling violence against women and girls, supporting victims, empowering survivors and holding perpetrators to account is critical. We can't do it without you. So I look forward to hearing the outcomes of today's event. Thank you.